Hello, church. Uh, welcome uh, to our worship. Um, I welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, I, I feel like I have not seen you for ages. And I really miss you. And, and I hope to just uh, get back to normal as soon as this is over. I uh, hope to see you all soon. Uh, today, I'd like to just show you uh, something a little different. I would like to show you the, the sanctuary. Uh, so, uh, if you can turn around. Do you see the sanctuary? I usually uh, preach at the uh, empty sanctuary, uh, which is pretty difficult at times, but we decide to put a, the photos of uh, each of you and many of you already sent us some. We posted, uh, placed it on the chair. So I don't feel as empty or lonely anymore. So uh, we're going to continue to do this. So if you haven't sent your photos, please uh, send them in. Uh, we will place it on the chair. And I'm going to imagine that I am uh, preaching uh, to you. Uh, individually and imagining each of your faces. Uh, as we begin, I would like to share with you our community, church community uh, news. Uh, there are several of them. Uh, first of all, I'd like to share with you uh, sad news. Uh, as you know, uh, Ruth and Helikman, uh, she uh, passed away last Wednesday. Um, she was in the hospital uh, uh, in coma for several days. And finally, uh, God called, called her uh, to heaven. Uh, um, I really miss her myself. Uh, she's uh, really funny and she is uh, just always happy and positive and, and when we meet each other and she makes fun of me and I make fun of her and uh, she is just a wonderful person and wonderful faith in the Lord. And she also lost her friend last year. Her best friend is Peggy and she passed away last summer. And I truly believe now uh, Ruthen is with the Lord and with her best friend at this time. Continue to pray for Jody and Paul and the rest of the family members for God's peace and comfort. And I'd like to show you another picture is uh, Benny and Josephine. Um, um, Benny's uh, uh, f the one son that he had passed away. He was only uh, 58 years old, and there was a health, uh, some complication. Uh, he passed away all of a sudden. Uh, that was on Friday. And um, so if you can also pray for Benny and Josephine uh, in your prayer, that'd be wonderful. And this is a family of John Tipjew. Uh, such a wonderful family with uh, three beautiful children. And uh, I already sent you on the email um, about his health condition. Uh, over last one, uh, over one year, he, he uh, got this treatment, uh, chemotherapy, that he was cured uh, uh, in terms of his uh, cancer. Uh, but uh, I guess last week, um, he was tested again, and um, doctors uh, found um, a new cancer developed in his lung and the liver as well. Uh, and uh, this is a very serious situation. So if you could pray for John Atipju for his um, cancer, that uh, God will miraculously uh, heal him. And uh, he just posted on his Facebook, uh, uh, this, this page, I want to read it to you. Uh, Let your faith be bigger than your fear. And I think that uh, represents his faith. 
instead of being fear, who's going to continue to trust the Lord, please uh, pray for John for healing. And, um, and this is a Ron Everwine. Um, he's our um, guitarist, main guitarist in our praise band. And um, he is uh, resting at home and he had all those uh, similar symptoms as a coronavirus. So he's being tested. Please pray for him so that the, the, the uh, test result might come negative. Uh, uh, finally, uh, this is, uh, I was able to visit um, Steve Lord and uh, Steve, uh, he was so happy to see both my wife and I, and uh, he's doing really well uh, with the help of mom and dad, and he's, uh, he's able to walk uh, on the street, and uh, he said he's really glad to be at home. So continue to pray for uh, Lord's family and uh, that uh, Steve will also, uh, uh, his body condition will be fully restored, so he needs uh, uh, your prayer as well. At this time, let's come to the Lord in prayer together. Let's just gather our thoughts and our heart together, and let's pray to God, bring our concern to our living God who hears all our prayers. Lord, we thank you for your mercies available each day. We thank you for being with us even when life, uh, our lives are faced with many trials. We pray for your courage to go against the fear and the worry and the depression by the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray for your special protection and strength for those who are in the medical field, the first responders, the essential workers and government officials, and all those who are serving in our communities, as well as all the church members, Lord. We pray for those who have lost the loved ones at our church. May you extend your comforting hand to Jody and Paul and Benny and Josephine and all the family members. We are limited in understanding their pains and sorrow, but you can truly empathize with them for you know everything about them, what they're going through. May you reach down to John Tipchu and, and Ron Everwine and all those who are going through physical illnesses and may you just shield them with your protection and heal them from their physical uh, infirmities, O oh God. During this corona crisis, may you grant us faith to look up to you for hope and guidance. And may you also speak to us through the living word of God. Proud us in Jesus' name, amen. Today, um, I'd like to share with you a message, message that is not that easy uh, topic. Last week, I shared a message. Uh, it is more of a sense of encouragement, and uh, we can trust in the Lord. We can get rid of the, our anxiety and trust in the Lord. I try to encourage you to have your faith in that sense. Today, I want to share with you the words uh, that come from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 or 7. It's a words, uh, message of challenge. I would like to challenge you to stand strong in your faith, trusting in our God. Have you seen some people who resonate kind of calmness and peace and love and security and the joy in despite of their troubles of life. It's like uh, some mornings that you go to the lake and you see uh, the lake is so calm and peaceful. Do you ever experience that? And there are people, no matter what the storms they go through, their heart condition is such a peace. How about, have you seen a tree that is 
standing strong in times of storm. Last week, there was a heavy storm and the tree was going back and forth. I thought some of the trees were going to fall apart. And some trees and, and the very old, the strong trees standing firm even in the midst of windy, stormy day. You know what, for me, I desire that. I desire to be like that tree that I want to just uh, be strong, standing firm on the ground, on the faith in Jesus Christ, even if that I go through some storms of life. I'm very sure you are like that too. See, God calls us to have a genuine faith, strong faith as gold, gold-like faith. I have spoken a, uh, uh, this topic about gold-like faith in the past when I gave message about Joseph's life. But today, I want to really dig into the Word of God. What does this faith mean? Gold-like faith, um, uh, written 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 to 7. See, this kind of a faith, the strong faith, does not happen naturally or neither automatically. It has to go through a fire or refining process. God allowed us to go through a certain environment that is tough and rough so that we can grow to have faith as gold. Um, when you are an athlete, right, uh, do you keep the same uh, kind of training when you are in high school? And when, uh, especially when you are entering into a professional game and you don't keep up the same exercise uh, years before, but you increase your exercise into more something sophisticated and as more harder, right? So in your training, you used to lift 150 pounds. Now you're lifting 175. And you're running two miles, but now you're running three miles. You used to do push-ups 60, now you're increasing to 70. If you are a climber, you don't just climb the mountain behind your home somewhere, but you go to the place like a high mountains and climb up and you challenge yourselves, right? When you're rowing the boat, you don't just pick a nice day, but you go out even the windy day and practice yourself, train yourself. I love to just go out, ride on a bicycle. That's what I do uh, for my enjoyment. Go out, do a 20, 30, 50 miles uh, one day. And there are days that it was so windy. Windy days are very difficult to ride. It's almost like a going up a hill. But you know what? For my exercise, I don't want an easy route. I challenge myself, go against the wind. It is tougher, but it makes me stronger. See, trials come in various degrees, and, and some trials are harder. And you know what it does? It makes us stronger, more skillful. It gives us a more character and endurance. Trials makes us stronger and stronger faith in God. Now, I want to just, my first point, before I share my first, first point, um, I'm going to just go over the passage uh, together, please. Verse 6. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had a suf to suffer grief in all kind of trials. These have come so that uh, the proven genuineness of your faith or greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. 
Now, my first point is this. The nature of the trial. What is trial like? And we're going to identify what trial is like. There are four things. Before I go further, I thought this quote was really great. It says, trials in life are not meant to make us fail, but to test how far we can soar. If you're going through some sort of trials, difficulties and troubles and issues in your life, it doesn't mean that you are a failure, but to test how far you can soar. And another quote is this, what if the trials of this life, the rain and the storms, the hardest nights, are your mercies in disguise? When we go through trials, it doesn't mean that I'm a failure. But trials, the storms of life, it means uh, that God's mercy is upon me. It is a blessing to us. Now, let's specifically get into the nature of the trial. There are four things. The first thing is this. Trial is necessary. I want you to just look into this. Uh, There's a a red letter. It's a necessary. And I want you to look at verse 6. Red letters may have two. May have had two. What does that mean? Little while, you may have had two. When you read it in that sentence, it's a little bit difficult to understand what that means. So I looked into uh, other translation, English translation, and many other English translations says, uh, if necessary or being necessary. That's what it means. May have had two. Uh, this means that you have to go through it. It is necessary that we are to go through the trials in our lives. It is necessary. It's like a college, uh, the uh, courses that you have to take. You know, there are many uh, required courses. Uh, Unless you finish those required courses, you cannot graduate college, right? There are some electives and optional courses that you can take, and uh, there's an option. But there are uh, mandatory subjects that you have to take, and that's when the word necessary is used. It is mandatory. You have no choice, but you have to go through this trial so that your faith, genuine faith, will result from it. You cannot bypass some of the things in life. When you want to become a medical doctor, you have to go through at least a seven to ten years of medical school. And without going through that, you cannot have a surgery and, and uh, open up somebody's uh, 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 sick body and try to do a, a, a surgery. Uh, you cannot do that. It is absolute necessary necessity to go through the training. And also, it's like I said, there are, there's a one time on the news, a 10-year-old boy got into the pickup truck and driving for miles. See, you cannot do that. In order for a person to drive, you have to uh, be older in age and also go through the driving test and written test, pass it. That's the right procedure. It is necessary process. Without that, you cannot drive the car. See, we do everything to avoid the trials in life. I don't want suffering. The trials I don't need to go through. We try to avoid it, but the scripture says the opposite thing, that it is necessary that we go through this. It was necessary for all the, uh, the, the spiritual giants in the scripture went through the trials. 
It was necessary for them to achieve a God's purpose and God's mission they had to go through. And you will see that in the Old Testament to New Testament. I'll just pick one example in the New Testament. Let's see the example of Peter. Peter was tested. He went through trials, and he was a, such a self-confident man. He was uh, strong, but his weaknesses were exposed in the trial. That confronted him. Remember the time after Jesus was arrested, he was fearful, ran away, and the three individuals came to him in a separate times. Do you know Jesus? He denied Jesus three times. Can you imagine the failure that he went through? How shameful he was? He went through that trial. But it was necessary so that he can rely upon God's grace. It's not his own ability that he learned how to rely upon God's grace. So that when he went over that uh, trials, you know what, later on when he received the Holy Spirit, then he was boldly able to go out on the street and he was not afraid to preach the gospel, witness of Jesus Christ. He was persecuted, and he died for Jesus Christ. He went through that trial. And same thing is true for us. Our Heavenly Father knows that there are things that we have to go through, even though they are difficult for us. Sometimes when we look back, those times when we went through tough times and trials and we see wow it was God who made me go through those trials and we understand that it is absolute necessary and it was good for me when I look back my own life I'm glad God, let me go through those trials of my life without that. I don't think I can be in the ministry. I couldn't even continue one year of the ministry because of those trials. I'm still able to be in the ministry of God. I'm very sure God will give me more trials. I pray that when I go through those trials, I pray that God will make my faith stronger each time. So first thing about trial, uh, trial, the nature of trial is it is a necessary thing. The second thing is trial. It is temporary. I want you to look at uh, green letters, temporary. And it says, for a little while. For a little while. See, trials don't last forever. See, there, in, if you look at our, our, uh, you know, our own lives, there's a one year, uh, it's a dark years. Then another year, uh, years after, there are numbers years, are very good years, right? There are seasons where, uh, where seasons of life are, it's really tough and rough, and there are other seasons of life where it is a blessing. There's a joy. How about months? There are a few weeks. Sometimes we go through tough, rough, uh, those trials, but other weeks are good. That means the trials are temporary. I know we go through this trial, the coronavirus, and we are kind of locked into our house, and we cannot do uh, things that uh, we enjoy. It's a kind of like a trial, but it won't go forever, and there is end to it. It is temporary kind of situation. Um, in my life, I had a couple of a surgeries. The first surgeries that I went through is uh, my Achilles tendon. And I injured my, both of my legs and the Achilles tendon just torn off and uh, two years apart. And each of those times, 
the recovery time was so painful after six weeks. And then uh, therapies, I thought maybe another couple more uh, months, then I'd be healed completely. And three months was not enough. Uh, six months was not enough. And it was so painful. And finally, towards the end of one year, I felt comfortable to walk around. And during that one year period, I said, Lord, when is it going to end? Am I still going to carry this pain forever? Lord, heal me. And during those times, I felt like, uh, um, you know, those pain won't go away. It's going to stay with me for years and years. But it was temporary. Sometimes week of suffering feel like it's forever. For some people, maybe a month of suffering, some trials and difficulty feel like a forever. But in truth, all the trials and difficulties that we go through are just a little while. What if, what if, you know, some of the trials it lasts our whole time here on earth. And some people go through that. For some people, they have to carry that trial, whatever the crisis and difficulty they, they have. They go through it until they die. But Scripture gives us a perspective. Even that is a little while compared to eternity that we're going to spend in heaven, it is a little while, right? Now, I want you to just look at uh, paper here, a little demonstration. Do you see anything here? Uh, probably uh, not be able to identify right here, but I uh, made a little dot there. It's even hard to see, right? See, our trial is like a, that little dot compared to the line here that's visible, right? Orange line. This little dot. That's what it means. Our trial is temporary. It is a little while. It's just like a dot compared to eternity. That's where we're going to spend uh, our lives in heaven. Scripture tells us our lives is like a, just like a mist. It's just like a vapor. It's just a, you know, uh, uh, when you uh, spray, have a, the uh, spray bottle, you spray it, and you will see the mist, and it falls down in a second. That's what the trial is like, whether a week or month and years, and that is temporary. It's not going to go forever, eternity, and praise the Lord, it will end soon. There is end to it. That is our hope. That is the nature of the trial. Now, uh, third things about the nature of trial says all kind. It's a purple letter. It says suffer griefs in all kinds of trouble. And in Greek, the original word uh, means diverse, various, or many colored. And that means trial comes in all kind of different ways and different shapes. It's not just one kind, many different ways. Literally, in the Greek word, it means shades of colors. See, there are many different colors there. You can create uh, hundreds of colors and mixing the colors to each other, right? Then also, each of those colors, you can make it into many different shades. That's how many trial, kinds of trial, trials there can be. To illustrate that, you know, when you go to a restaurant, I am just sometimes overwhelmed with the the menus, uh, some restaurants, you open up the menu. There's so many different types of things and the food and appetizers and drinks. And sometimes it takes so long time to decide what I want because there's so many different kinds. How about 
when you stop at a gas station somewhere and uh, you're so thirsty, you want to get a nice cool drink and you stop at the cooler and you see so many different kinds of drinks and Cokes and Sprites and energy drink and water, different kind of water. You know what? There's so many kinds. That's what it means. Trials have many, many kinds. See, trials, uh, it could be a trial of your faith. Do you really believe that, uh, believe what you say you believe? Sometimes we have this uh, kind of sense of doubt that just comes and doubting God. So there's a trials of our faith. Another kind is a tri trials, uh, the, uh, in regards to financially, financial trials. Another type is a physical trial, and uh, one day you have this uh, physical illness, and it's going for a long time. Physical trial, emotional trial. You may feel the uh, uh, sense of grief and, and worry and fear that takes over, and, you're, and some people are de uh, experiencing depression. Maybe it's an emotional trial. For some people, it's a, it's a spiritual and do you know that even success can be a trial? In fact, someone has said that success often tests us as much as, as much or more than failure does. See, how do you respond to the su a success? Do we respond in pride with a humility or do we treat people poorly or graciously? See, that's a trial. Our marriage is a pro, uh, trial too. See, marriage problem is unending. Our relational issues are unending. You know, just from my own experience in marriage, I thought one problem is ended, and praise God, I am finally got over. We're all good together. Then, after one thing is over, then there is another problem comes. Problems are so creative. And it comes very unexpected and very new, right? And it comes so unexpected. It comes every day or every moment. It's unending. Just like that. Trials are all kinds, all kinds unexpected trials to come. And there's another kind about the trial. Suffer a grief. Suffer a grief. In the original Greek word, it means grieve or, or to distress, to give pain. So generally what it means is, it's not a fun experience. When you go through trials, it's not like a entertainment. It's not a, like a recreational thing that you enjoy, right? But it is a suffering. It is a suffering grief. How should I explain this as suffering grief? It's like a child, you know, little child. You run around and you fall down. There's a case where this, uh, a child falls down and you're kind of thinking and then suddenly bursts into tears and crying out, right? And so that case, maybe, maybe this child wanting to get uh, attention, so cries out. But there's another child, falls really hard and crying out because you can tell this child not just to get attention, but really hurt. So this is a case where the suffering grief is, your, your suffering is so great, and you're, 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 so, you're crying out, oh, mom, dad, and crying out. That's the context. Suffering is great. So it grieves you. Matthew 26, 37, and Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane, before he took the cross, um, the pain that Jesus felt that night was so great, he sweat drops of blood. It was real, it was powerful, it was agonizing. So it is not just a little uh, kind of pain, um, you know, it, it's not just like uh, the suffering, the, uh, the suffering grief. It's not like a, a little exercise kind of a pain. They are real. They are powerful. 
Don't let anyone minimize what you are going through. Don't just say, it's not really that bad. When we go through those trials, it hurts. You know, some philosophers and some, like a Christian science, a new age, or some other religious uh, groups, you know what they say? They teach that sickness or suffering is just an illusion. No, Bible says suffering is not an illusion. Whether it is physical, emotional, whatever it is, the trial that you face as a real trial is painful. It is a suffering grief. We are not like block of wood. You know, block of wood, you just chop it, break it, it doesn't get hurt. We are not like that. When we go through trials, it hurts. It is painful. That's what trial is. That's why many people try to avoid those trials because we know trials are hard. It is painful. So that, uh, my first point is the nature of a trial is necessary, it is temporary, it's all kind, it is a suffering grief. But now, second major point is this. What is the purpose of a trial? Purpose of trial. Why does God allow this uh, kind of suffering, the trials in our lives? Why? And I want us to read this uh, verse 7. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire, tests, and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. Now, uh, it says, Trial, trials are designed to prove genuine faith. How do you know that your faith is real and, and genuine? It is proved. How do you know that? Sometimes we feel like we may have a genuine faith. Maybe, in fact, you may not have that genuine faith that God is looking for. Why do schools uh, make students go through tests? I remember those tests and quizzes I really didn't like. But... We have to go through those tests, right? When we have those tests, it, it, it is a good measurement how I am doing in terms of learning-wise, right? So it is a necessary. It shows how much I know. Um, <clears throat> see, athletes, they're tested. 